Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Well, today I'm going to talk about thermal typewriters and uh, using these actual original ribbon cassettes. Stay tuned. Since I've been interested in thermal typewriters, one of the things that's attracted me to them is being able to use thermal paper. There is a variety of thermal papers out there available. This is the higher quality letter size brother paper. And also I've been using the inexpensive thermal fax paper that comes in rolls. This for instance is the real thin Staples brand. The thing about obviously thermal typewriters when you're using thermal paper is you don't use the original ribbon cartridge that came with a the thermal typewriter. Those were intended to, to print onto normal paper. I find it to be a very interesting way of rough draft creation. But recently, uh, my friend Kevin acquired a pack, a three pack of the Brother cassette. These are the 6030 uh, model number for use with the EP41, 43, 44, and 45 thermal typewriters. And I thought, well, hey, I have an EP43. Let's try uh, this uh, ribbon cartridge in the EP43 and compare it on different kinds of paper and see how it performs. And then we'll compare it against the kind of printing you get when you print directly without the cartridge to thermal paper. So when thermal typewriters came out in the mid-1980s, they were originally originally intended to be used as regular electronic typewriters typing onto normal paper using a proprietary cartridge and it seems like every manufacturer had their own cartridge and even within one manufacturer you'll have different size cartridges for different kinds of machines for instance the uh, this particular kind for the EP40 series is not compatible with the EP20 series cartridges uh, nowadays though because these cartridges are not being manufactured new. All you have is new old stock cartridges available online and they vary in price but they can be rather expensive and because the supply of them is limited uh, this is one of the reasons why I like using just thermal paper no cartridge. But hey let's try this on different kinds of paper and see what happens. Well okay so I have the EP43 right here. Let me open up this package. Okay you remove the little spindle protection thing. I'll open up the typewriter here, open that up and open this panel up and this is the carbon film right here. Make sure this is tightly wound. We're going to just snap it right onto there. You must make sure that the ribbon goes behind the little print bracket where the head is. Snap it in place. Okay. Close that up. Turn the power on. This is a test of the... Well, looking at this copy here, now this was standard printer paper, copy paper, inexpensive paper, so it started out, the ribbon at the very start had a wrinkle or something in it, but then it soon straightened out, but I'm just looking at this, it just looks like the quality of the printing is less than pristine. There's a little bit of faintness to some of these letters or unevenness. Even down here in the second line it starts to get better but still some of the letters just don't look as good. Even on the third line here it just looks less than perfect. Now it could be the ribbons or uh, cartridge is old. It could be the paper however. So let's compare that real quickly. It looks to me like on standard thermal paper this is the really inexpensive thin of uh, Staples fax roll paper, it looks better than the carbon film printing on standard copy paper, which is what this is. So I'm not impressed so far, but it could be our, our cartridge is old or something, but it could also be the paper. So let's try putting in a different kind of paper. So this is Southworth's brand of parchment paper. I'm still seeing some of this faintness, this unevenness in some of these letters that I just don't see that kind of unevenness with thermal printing itself. Let's try a different kind of paper. So this is Southworth's ivory linen paper. Now this is a textured paper, so that might be an unfair comparison also, but we're going to try this here. 
Well, as I look at this, it certainly is not any better. I think the texture of this linen paper is just not doing very good for this carbon film. I don't think it was really intended for the carbon film type ribbon. I'm going to try this Triumph Clairefontaine. This is really good, smooth uh, letter writing paper intended for like fountain pens or whatnot, but it's nice and smooth. It's not textured. Let's try that. Now, I was using this paper with some fountain pen testing earlier on the back side, but all right, let's uh, go up. Well, it definitely looks better. I would say that this Clairefontaine definitely gives a pretty darn good impression. So just as a point of comparison, let's go ahead and remove the cartridge film ribbon. And let's try it with this higher quality brother letter writing, letter size thermal paper. I've already used part of it for previous typing. We'll just skip above it. So comparing the two kinds of imprinting here, um, the thermal paper is up on top. This is the thicker brother paper. This is the Clairefontaine with a cartridge ribbon. It looks like you can get pretty good quality printing out of these cartridges onto normal paper, but it's definitely dependent on the quality of the paper. They're both really good. I really think the thermal paper is just more consistent, even with the very inexpensive thin staples fax paper. This printing is just so much clearer and more distinct, less issues with letters being inconsistent and not printing. Well, there was one other kind of test I wanted to try. How easy is it to erase an error using standard correction tape and then print over it with the carbon film ribbon. And then I might try the same thing with a whiteout pen. Okay, so I'm in this single space mode. Let's do this correction test. First of all, we'll type a line. I've done a carriage return. So now I'm going to raise the paper up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight half spaces. And I'm going to try just correcting, erasing the word fox. And I'm going to erase the word jumps. Fox jumps. Okay. Now, to get down to this printing position, I need to do my eight space half spaces. Plus two more because I started at the line below it. And now you can see it's a blind typewriter. I can't see where I'm at. <laughs> so, T H E space Q U I C K space B R O W N space Fox space jumps. Return. Okay. Now, let's go back up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and let's try erasing, let's say, the first word, the, with the liquid correction pen. Okay, I'm going to have to go back down my eight half spaces, plus two more. Okay, I'm going to try typing over with the word the, capital T-H-E, hit enter. Well, the liquid correction pen does somewhat of a job, but it's inconsistent. It's not very good. The correction tape also, the overprinting is just not very good, not very good quality. So there's the problem with even using carbon film ribbons on conventional paper is they just don't overprint very well on rough surfaces like correction fluid or correction tape. Well, to be honest with you, I was expecting a better performance out of these carbon film transfer ribbons than what I saw. Perhaps, is this one of the reasons why these thermal typewriters only lasted in the market for a few years? Uh, the fact that you couldn't use any kind of paper with them very well, like the higher quality letter writing paper that takes ink, or this textured linen paper is wonderful with manual typewriters with cloth ribbons. It takes cloth ribbon ink really well. 
Not so much this carbon film stuff uh, as I, for the papers that I tested, the Claire Fontaine was the best, but it really doesn't hold a candle to the higher quality thermal uh, paper in a thermal printing mode only. Uh, this brother letter size uh, paper that I get is model number LB3635. And this has proven to be, for my purposes, the best quality thermal paper I've found. It's really nice and heavy, and it does a wonderful job in the thermal only mode on these typewriters without the carbon film ribbon. Well, all of this uh, really started because my friend Kevin got an EP43, and he had been playing with it a little bit with thermal paper, but he really wanted to see what would happen when he uh, got some carbon film ribbons. He acquired these, and he gave me a pack of these for me to test out as well. I was wanting to share with you some of Kevin's thoughts about the EP43 and thermal typewriters in general, especially considering that we're sequestered now on lockdown and uh, it's harder for me to get together with Kevin and have him explain it himself. But as per our, our numerous phone conversations we've had in the last few days and weeks. I ended up liking the Brother EP43 a lot and uh, I bragged it up a lot on this channel. For my style of writing, the EP43 works really well in a kind of stream of consciousness word dump mode where you're just typing, you buffer the uh, characters through the 15 character LCD and you can do corrections in that. You can also use the line by line mode where you have the entire line to type in that memory before you hit the carriage return and it prints. So you have the option there to get pretty error free typing with it. I found it to be quite useful. Now Kevin's uh, perspective is a little different and his usage mode on typewriters differs from mine. Kevin is more of a typesetter and I am more of a rough drafter. And what I mean by typesetter is Kevin likes to control the printing, the characters completely. He likes to control mar the margin, where the words are at. He wants to be able to go back up on previous lines and change things and do things. And on particular on the EP43, it's less adept at that because it does not have a direct print character by character mode. Now here was another thing that Kevin pointed out and I really haven't appreciated this. And it, it bothered me less because of the way I use these typewriters. I use these typewriters mainly watching the characters scroll through the LCD and I do my corrections as I'm typing through there before it actually prints. But if you want to go back and readjust your printing line and your printing position, uh, the thing that struck Kevin was that these thermal typewriters, especially when the cartridge is installed, are almost like a blind typewriter. And if you don't know what a blind typewriter is, the very first typewriters in the late 19th century, you couldn't see the printing position. It was underneath the platen, and you had to kind of, in your mind, picture where, what the words were and where things were at. Well, because the cartridge obstructs your view of the printing position, uh, you can't easily see where that printing line is if you want to move back down. The only way you can do it really is to count your page up and page down mo movements with half line presses. I guess what I'm saying is that for my usage for rough draft typing only, these kind of machines are fine, but a writer like Kevin, he wants more direct control over the each character as a typesetter style of, of typist, and I can see where these types of typewriters are less than ideal. What do you guys think? Are you a user of a thermal typewriter? Are you interested in them? Well, I'd like to hear your comments down below. Do you find uh, you have certain issues with thermal typewriters that make them less than ideal, or are you happy with them? Are you a rough draft, first draft stream of consciousness kind of writer, like what these are ideally suited for? Or do you need more direct control over all your printing position? Are you more of a typesetting kind of a typist? I'd like to hear your comments. Drop a note down below. I'd love to hear from you, uh, especially in this time when we're all sequestered. It's great to be able to use this kind of media and share our thoughts. Well, as always, I hope you guys stay well, stay creative, and of course, have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.